Hey, it's Chris. These are a few of my recent productivity focused iPad app discoveries and I'm really excited to see which one you think is gonna be the best for you. The first app that we're checking out today is called Muse and it markets itself as a spatial canvas for your research notes, your reading, your sketching, your screenshots, and your bookmarks. Because, get this, to the Muse team, deep thinking doesn't happen in front of a computer. It happens on your iPad. I'm just gonna read you a little quote here. Listen to what the Muse team has to say about the iPad being a special place, okay? Desktops are for the most complex, sophisticated tasks. Phones are for when you're on the go, for quick capture, for saving, etc. Tablets are an intermediate step for reading, for annotating, for forming ideas, for rearranging ideas. To the Muse team, your iPad is an intermediary step between doing really complicated, sophisticated things on your desktop and between capturing and saving things from your phone. It's this in-between place where you can interact with things in a very different way than on any other device, including with the Apple Pencil. That's a huge part of the Muse experience. In my mind, Muse is the closest thing to a digital whiteboard as you can actually get. A place where you can just throw all kinds of things, move them around, and actually come in and annotate things just like you would on a real digital whiteboard except it has some digital superpowers. It's like a whiteboard on steroids. So you can tap to turn on or off the tools. There's a place where you can add things like a board, a photo, a file, some text, or paste something. But what Muse does is it gives you some cards and you can pinch into and zoom back out of each of these cards. Here's an empty board. I can say, hi and then I can get out of that board. Here's a text card, so I can come in here and actually do some more typing, and then I can get back out of that. It's very iPad native. What I mean is, it's made for pinching and zooming and gestures and touch and the Apple Pencil. And then all of these cards can be stacked and arranged. And then you can use your Apple Pencil to come in and mark all of those things up. It's pretty amazing. Now look what I did. I came in here and I pasted this YouTube video from Andy Minio. Man, I love how you can mark this up, it's awesome. And I can tap on that and it will take me to that YouTube video, which is great. Let me drop in a photo of some coffee that I had for breakfast today. I can come in here and write on it, I can zoom back out. I think you're starting to see how this is very different than other iPad apps. I do wish, however, that I had taken the time to install a paper like on this iPad because it feels weird without it. I've gotten so used to it that it's just not as good of an experience without my paper like. You forget after using it for a while how paper like it actually is and how unpaper like the iPad is all by itself without that screen cover. But when you really need to get into an idea or a topic and do some planning and things need to be messy, then this is a place that will actually let you connect things in a very fluid way without being too rigid. And that's why it's so awesome. One thing you'll notice is that the pencil kit tools are very minimal and they only show up when you need them. It's just a very fluid and natural experience and honestly, it's just unlike anything else that I've ever tried. It's so cool too to be able to mix different kinds of elements because you know, I know some people are really rigid and structured and they like a grid layout and everything to be organized just so. I think this kind of an option is just gonna set a lot of people free when it comes to unlocking your ideas and organizing and thinking in a different way. Now here's something that's kind of funny. The Muse people said, no, we're gonna make an iPad app first and the iPhone app is just gonna be a companion to the iPad app. So they fully expect you to capture things on your phone but not do any work there. The work actually comes within the iPad app itself. And that's a super unique approach. I feel like a lot of people start with the iPhone or the Mac and then kind of replicate that experience the best they can on other devices. But here they're like, no, really, the iPad is the best for this type of usage. And the iPhone actually plays a useful, a necessary, but supporting role. The next app that we're talking about is called Craft. It's a note-taking app, which do we really need another note-taking app? We have Apple Notes, we have GoodNotes, Notability, Bear, Notion, the list goes on and on and on. But Craft is actually crafted for the iPad first, and that makes a huge, huge difference. It does work on the Mac, it does work on the iPhone, but it really takes advantage of touch and drag and drop, and it's visual first, and it just feels native to the iPad. 
And if you're an iPad user, that's a big, big deal. Now, right off the bat, you're gonna see that this is a block-based notes app. So that lets you do some really unique things. Notion, of course, is also block-based, probably the thing that popularized block-based note-taking. And Craft kind of picks that idea up and runs with it. It's gonna let you add a block from photos or your camera from stock photos like Unsplash. You can add a sketch, a scan, some files. You can insert code, a formula, plain text. And there's some real benefits to working with blocks. I mean, it's really easy to drag something to a different place and reorder it, for instance. Of course, you can bulk edit things, you know, if you want to group stuff together. That's really handy here. But I kind of like that it doesn't go nuts with the blocks. Notion is almost too in-depth. There's so many block options that it can be overwhelming for people, right? And I think most people probably end up not even fully exploring everything that Notion can do. This does a lot, but it keeps it simpler. So by default in Craft, you get a page, but anything within that page can also be turned into its own page. So you kind of end up with pageception. It's like pages within pages within pages, if you want. Something else that's cool is that you can change how each page looks. So you can kind of give it its own feel and personality. So I can click these dots, I can say page style, I can give it a cover image. So I'm just gonna come in here and pick a random photo for my header. Uh, I can choose to show the title or not, or the author. I can give the block spacing a dynamic or classic look. If I like the margins on the side, I can keep those at regular, or I can say, give me a wide view, but it's got some fun tricks. I can come in and hit slash and choose from all kinds of different types of blocks, like a list block, maybe a to-do block. With the slash, that's how you can change colors or indent or align things. I can even do things like insert the date, which is really handy. Now, let's see what happens when I paste a URL. Look at that, I got a card here, which takes me to a nice little preview without jumping into Safari or the browser. Now this URL preview is a good example of a card, and you can style these cards a little bit differently. You can do small, regular, or large for your cards, and by the time that you end up with a several different cards, this really makes for a great way to visually see and organize things, right? Isn't this so much better than just seeing an actual text link in yellow like you see in Apple Notes? In fact, any kind of media that you put in here comes in as a card. So here's uh, an Andy Mineo music video and I'm just gonna give it a small card here. What happens when I click on it? It opens up a preview. I can see it right here. All right, here's what it looks like when I paste in a tweet. Again, it comes in as a card. This one I'm gonna style as a bigger version. And you know what, let's do this one as a bigger one too. And then once you get a bunch of these cards in, you can come in and drag those around and reorder them, which is great. Now look, here's something that's cool. Here's kind of an outline that I made for a video. But if I come in here and select a bunch of blocks and I'm like, hey, those are related. They should be their own page. I can easily group those together and then look, it's created a page within a page here. Then I can come in and give that group a title and it's just a super cool way to organize your thoughts. And then of course, I can pick that up and drag that around. Now you can come in here and create a sketch block, which will then let you use the Apple Pencil. So your Apple Pencil is supported, but it's just the very basic default pencil kit, Apple Pencil experience. I love that I can take a block and drag it over to the side and do a side-by-side -side view of my notes. Within Craft, you can have multiple instances open. The split screen support is incredibly good. And then of course I can come in and drag and drop stuff between the note that I just put over in the side window. And that works for your blocks as well if you need to transfer them. Something else that's very cool is that it has some widget support. So you can get a small, medium, or large widget. So you can just have a, one of your workspaces open or you can just do a quick open if you wanna dive right in to an important note. People are talking about craft a lot on social media and for a good reason. It's really full featured. It's putting the iPad front and center and visually it's stunning. So should you check it out? Absolutely. What's the price? It's free for up to a thousand blocks. That's enough to get you started for sure. And it's really cheap to, to push beyond that and get some extra features if you want to. All right, let's take a look at another app that's a little bit similar to the ones that I've already talked about, but it's got some unique stuff, okay? It's called Journal, and not only is it productivity focused, but it also has a focus on keeping you sane. 
keeping your mind clear, not getting overloaded. So simply put, journal is a space to organize all your ideas. You make a space for every project or topic and you can throw in here websites and videos and podcasts and emails and images and notes. All kinds of media can live in here and look good and stay organized. Sign in with Apple, you gotta love that. So this actually does do a good job of bringing your projects to life in a whole different way. Lots of personality here. Let's say you're planning a trip. You can throw in trip details from websites that you found, from reviews, from your email, like confirmations, for instance. It can all live here in the same space. But let's actually check it out. It's all about spaces. I'm gonna create a new space here called Nitro Coffee, all right? And I'm gonna give it an icon. Nitro makes me happy, so why not a smiley face? I'm gonna hit the plus icon. Here are the options. New link, new note, section header, something from my apps, a file upload, camera roll, YouTube, and even Spotify. Well, let's pretend I'm learning how to make Nitro coffee, okay? I'm gonna paste in a YouTube URL. I'm gonna save that, and then look how it shows up. We got this nice little card here. If I hit play, it will just play right here without kicking me out into YouTube, which is awesome. All right, but I'm gonna come in here and add in a link to an article about making Nitro coffee, and that's gonna create this really nice looking card right above my video, and then I can pick that up, I can rearrange it. So I think Journal, as you can see, is very different from the other apps that we've covered today, but the real appeal, I think, comes from that ease of organization. You don't have to think too much about your folders or your tags or anything like that. It's more about just getting content into the app, into that inbox, and then organizing it later as you need to. So you know you've got it saved, and that's what really counts, that's what really matters. And then you can come in here and access it, organize it, do what you want with it later. And then if you need to, and if you like this, you can hit the pause button and it'll sort of make everything disappear and give you a break from your work, which is always good. You don't wanna be a workaholic. Well, that's where we're gonna cut things off today. I hope that you found a brand new, exciting, fun, new, useful app that's gonna be a new go-to for you. Uh, don't forget, you guys can follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K, on Instagram and Twitter. Lots of exciting things being posted there all the time. Also check out the After Party, that's the podcast. It's out on Fridays. It's getting more and more detailed. It's a lot more educational than it used to be. So if you like Apple stuff, you wanna understand it better, learn more about it, then make sure to check that out. These are all options. They're ways to connect and I wish that you would check them out. They're all linked up down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.